to season three of Unapologetically Woman. We're celebrating phenomenal women all across Kentucky who make no apologies for their perspectives or the impacts that they're making in the community. Today, we're celebrating Gwen Minton. Gwen is a wife, a mom, a grandma, an author, a nurse, a poet, and pastor of Acts 2 Life Transformation Church. Unapologetically woman, hey. Gwen Mentor, that's you. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank God. I am really humbled to be sitting in this seat, I'm telling you. Well, when I think about you, I think about I can do all things hey. through God who strengthens me. Yeah, Because yeah. that looks like that's what your journey is. Yeah, it is. It really is. And I, I mean, I, I look back over this crazy life of mine, and I know without a shadow of a doubt, it's him because it's nothing to do with me, Sharon, nothing at all. But I'm just really humbled to be sitting here because the people who've sat before me, phenomenal. Absolutely. And I'm humbled, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So your life changed on a trip to South Africa. Yes, I had just lost a job. Well, they downsized. Mm -hmm. And I had to come home and tell my husband that I'm gonna be out of a job. Two days later, I get a phone call from a friend who's actually a, a very um, religious man. He's a prophet. And he said, look, I've been praying for two weeks. I got to go somewhere. And he said, I need you to go with me. And I said, where? He said, I need you to go to Swaziland, South Africa with me. I said, have you lost your everlasting mind? I don't, I just lost my job. But he said, I've been praying for two weeks. And the only name that keeps coming up for this women's conference, the first ever is you. And so that's how that got started. And then Cameron decided, hey, my husband said, I'm going with you. And it was there that our lives changed. My life changed forever. I mean, it was the people, it was the atmosphere. As soon as I put my feet on African soil, I knew that something changed in me. There was an immediate connection. And when we would walk into like the first service, Sharon, there was no big fanfare, no worship team, no, you know, all this that we have here in the States. It was just people who was hungry for Jesus and the sound. We didn't have to know the words. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to know, but we walked literally into the presence of God. And that just brought tears to your eyes. Something happened in your heart, my heart, that I'll mm -hmm. never be able to change. We were there for two weeks. We watched women walk with their babies. They came and spent the night inside the church the night before, baskets on head, babies on their back. They slept on a concrete floor because they wanted to be in the presence of God. And then the next morning, there were chickens running around, cows running around, <laughs> and that's how they were fed. They boiled the eggs, they brought in big pots to wash their face, the humility of that type of surrender to say, I just want Jesus, that's it. Wow. You know, and I'll come and do whatever. And when we got back to the States, it, my heart was just, just like this, back and forth, back and forth. And I can remember I was in a church, in my church, taking communion, it was Christmas Eve. And as I began to put the cup to my mouth, literally, I could hear this voice say, do not take from this cup unless you're willing to submit to me what I'm asking you to do. And that was to be a pastor. And I said, God, and all while we were in Africa, they didn't call me my name. They just kept saying pastor. And we, I spent the whole time saying, I'm not a pastor. I spent that whole time doing that. But, you know, we had a gentleman at the end of the conference who said, you just don't know that you're a pastor, but you will. And that Christmas Eve, three, four months after Africa, that hit very hard. And I asked God, I said, God, I'll clean toilets, but I don't want to be a pastor. Because Sharon, you know, you know. You were trying to debate. Girl, I was trying to run as fast <laughs> as I could because think about it. I mean, here in Kentucky, I mean, you don't, it, it's, that, it's that stigma that women cannot preach the gospel. And so I don't care where you went, men still kind of push that away. You, you could do everything else in the church, but you can't, you can't preach a sermon. So it was difficult. It was not a good time. And in some cases, still not. But I was going to ask you, do you think it's more open now for it's, women? There's, there's more a little bit, but you still have that, 
that mindset. And my thing has always been, if God can call and make a donkey speak, why can't a woman preach his word? Why can't he? Why cannot? If he'll make a rock cry out for somebody, why can't he use a woman's voice to also preach the word? So that's how I had to look at it. But then I, you know, I have this thing where God is like, I'm talking to you. And it's like, I said, God, you know, why did you call me when I'm so old to be a pastor? Why couldn't you have done it when I was younger? And he said, I opened up Sarah's womb when she was 90. So there's no problem with you. I said, okay, enough said. That's it. Because you're also a registered nurse. Yes, I am. I am. You're a lot of things. Girl, I'm just blessed, you know. Uh, Kentucky State University, I go thoroughbreds. Mm -hmm. That's where I got my education as a nurse. Um, and it was crazy. That journey was mm -hmm. crazy as well. Um, I was already working somewhere, and the Lord said, quit your job. Go back to school. Be a nurse. And I was like, why do I got to quit my job to do this? But I didn't know that on that journey that my future husband was there. And I had applied all these other places. Nobody else said anything, mm -hmm. but it was Kentucky State. That Is that gave where me you that met Cameron Mentor? He's yes. He's media producer. Yes, it's where I met him. Yes, indeed, in the cab <laughs> of Kentucky State University. <laughs> And it's just been kind of like this, this whole thing for us, you know, ever since. But I'm, I'm extremely blessed, Sharon. I really am. I'm thankful. Well, and you have a lot to be thankful for because yeah. just a couple of years ago, you had a very traumatic and near-death experience. Yeah, I did. Um, I was at the movies with my husband. We had just finished the movies. And all of a sudden, Sharon, I could not get air in or out. Uh, Cameron had gone, you know, to the restroom or whatever, and uh, I'm just like, I can't breathe. And so the lady behind me was like, later she tells me there's something, she's, there's something wrong with this woman. And she told her husband to go in and find Cameron. By that time, everything's black for me. And then all of a sudden I get this, <gasps> it's a little bit of air. We don't wait for the ambulance. My husband rushes me in his car to Central Baptist. There the doctor comes out and says, Miss Mentor, I've got, I don't have good news for you. And I said, okay. And he said, you have several blood clots in both your lungs. You have had pulmonary embolisms. You have several. And if one of these move, you're dead. And I said, okay. I'm smiling. I said, okay. I look at the doctor and he's like, you do, you do understand what I'm telling you, right? I said, yeah, I'm a nurse. I said, but I got something to tell you. I said, I'm in a win-win situation. He looked at me as though I was crazy. I said, if I die, I'm glory bound. I'm heaven bound. If I live, then God's given me more time with my family and my assignment in this earthly realm is not over. So they rushed me to ICU. I got 14 clots. And everybody comes in, every doctor, every day is like, you know, why are you so happy? I say, because I'm at peace at who I am in him. And so my ICU room, Sharon, they said it was the first time ever they had to come in and calm down a room for being so noisy in the ICU room. Wow. Because I was at such peace. And everybody that came in my room, I offered Jesus to them. When you have a near-death experience, something changes in you. And there's an urgency that you don't want anybody to be lost. Mm -hmm. Not in, you, don't, you don't. So it was my opportunity. Everybody that came to my room, all my nurses, I offered you, do you know Jesus? It was that critical for me. And so that's how I lived my life. When I, they didn't think, you know, I, I could live. They said most people with one clot dies immediately. Wow. I had 14. So I am a living, walking miracle. Four years later, I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't lay down. I had so many clots in my lungs. I had to have oxygen for nine months just to sleep. But through it all, here I am. Here I give him are. glory. Your, yeah. Your assignment is not done. No. 
And one of the, the most beautiful things, Gwen, because I, ha I have a personal relationship with yeah. you, if, if we want to call it Yeah, that. we do. Um, yes, we do. You know, because you were there for me um, on a Saturday morning <laughs> when I was feeling everything that I was hey. feeling. Mm. You know, yeah. and you welcomed me and you prayed for me and yeah. you just made, made me see that this is where I'm supposed to be. And you know, Sharon, we're family. I, I mean, I tell, I don't tell people things just to tell them things. When I tell somebody I love them, I mean that. When I tell somebody that you're like family to me, I don't always have to know all the ins and outs, but your character, who you are, mm -hmm. I loved you. And anytime anybody needs prayer and they need us, our doors are Never closed. Well, I know I was crying. I had snot everywhere. Hey, that's all right. Oh, that's what we do. God, I can't stop crying. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I can't stop. No, crying. no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. But God had your assignment, mm -hmm. and if we get to be a part of your journey, to look at you now, that's why I say, look how humbled I am. I look at that moment that we had, ha, in my living room. Yes, and I look at where we are sitting right now. Look at all the wonderful things that God has done for you. And, and I get you. to be a little piece of this part, this moment right now. It's, it's overwhelming for me. And I thank God for you. I thank God for your journey because you've opened up the way for so many other women to sit in this seat, to be recognized who might not ever, people will never know the greatness that they do in the community and the women that they are. But you, you're doing that. Okay, now you're trying to take over the interview. <laughs> you're trying, you trying no. to take over the show and have me over here all tearing up. No, no, no. <laughs> we just love each other. That's it. Yes, that's that, it. That, that that's is it. it. That's but, it. So, but that's not all that you do. You're an author and a poet. <laughs> Tell us about this stuff. I didn't want to be an author either. The Lord made me quit my job for that too. Six months. What's it the name of your journey. book? See it in your mind, believe it in your heart, and do it by faith. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so I wrote a poem to reflect every chapter. I made the chapter short so that people won't get so caught up in reading long, long things. Mm -hmm. And uh, just put my heart into it. I mean, it was just like, God, do I have to? Can I talk the book instead of write the book? But, you know... I did. Uh, as far as the poet goes, Sharon, I, I'm a storyteller. So I do poetry in story form. So if someone would give me something about your life, I would take that and make that into a poem, if that makes sense. It does make sense. Yeah. And Okay, but you also have things that don't always make sense. <laughs> Tell me about O and fooling around with Oprah. Ah, uh, I thought it was a joke. <laughs> I get this random call, okay? And the lady on the other line says, hello, is this Gwen Minter? And I says, yes, who am I speaking with? And the voice says, I'm Michelle Buford. Didn't ring a bell for me. I was like, okay. And she said, I'm the senior editor of O Magazine. I said, okay, yeah, right, okay, <laughs> this is a joke, it's a scam. And she spent so much time trying to get me to understand this is real. And so she goes on and says, I'm doing an um, uh, article in Essence Magazine. And I was looking for a motivational speaker. So she said, I just typed in motivational speaker, and I hit your website. And she said, it was your smile that caught me. And so she said, you had all your contact information. So she said, I'm calling you. And I said, but to do what? And she said, I want you to be a part of this, of this article I'm going to do. And I said, you work for Oprah? She said, yes, ma'am, I did. <laughs> so this went on for weeks. And then she called me back. And she said, I'm going to call you at a certain time. And I'm going to interview you. And so Michelle Buford, um, she interviewed me for this magazine, for Essence. And it was, you know, how to live fearlessly. And I got a little blurb in there, you know, but it was out of the blue. And that's what she said. That's how she found me. That's how she contacted me. Okay. So, so now how do you get on a phone call with the Queen of England? How does that happen? <laughs> that was so random. I worked, <laughs> I worked for W.T. Young. 
And if you all know anything about W.T. Young, icon of the horse industry, you, you know, were his Lexus. nurse, right? Yes, I was his private duty nurse. He would do things like that to me. So he said, Gwen, um, I've, I've, can you hold on this phone for me? And I said, for what? And he said, well, you just say hello. I said, who is it? He said, just say hello. I said, hello, who am I speaking with? Silence. And then I said, hello? And then I hear this British accent and she introduces herself as the Queen of England. And she goes, and then she asked me, she said, are you the private duty nurse for W.T. Young? And I'm like, uh, uh, yes, ma'am. And she was like, oh, and she goes into this whole conversation about horses and, and I'm looking at Mr. Young like, why did you give me this phone? What am I supposed to say to the Queen of England? Right. So, you know, I was at, for once, I was at a loss of words. I can't, I, I, I can't I, I, believe you it. You know, I, I give it up. I believe it. Yeah, I couldn't either. But those are the kind of opportunities I had during that time that it was probably one, it was the best job, besides being a servant of Christ, that I think I've ever had as a nurse. And Does so, that make sense? Well, you're never at a loss for words because no. you've also, on your downtime, you have fun being a radio personality. <laughs> Tell us about that. After launching the book, um, I got a call from WLOU, the radio station in Louisville. And so um, I'm doing this whole book promo. Then all of a sudden, Spike Davis, comedian, jumps in on my interview. And he's on another mic, and he's just giving it to me. And I'm just rolling with it. I'm just rolling. And so later, about three days later, I get, I get a call from his people. Again, I think it's a joke. And it's his executive producer. And he said, hey, get a hold of her. Said she just, she didn't miss a beat. She just rolled with me and it just flowed. So that's, he said, I would love for her to be a part of my show. So I became his, a part of his Spike Davis and Friends show. And I was their relationship person and they would call in for advice. And that's what I did for like two years. Wow, <laughs> you have you have been blessed in so many in yeah. so many ways, in crazy all, ways, in crazy yeah. ways, because all of these things just don't happen no, no, to crazy. everyday people unless you're being positioned for something uh, different. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Sharon. What's next for you, Gwen? You know, that's a good question. That's a good question. I, you know, there's some things that uh, I I really believe that God is doing in my life right now. Can I put a finger on what it is? No. I just, I feel it. I just know there's something. And I never know with him. I never know with God what, what it is he has for me. But I am a faith leaper. If he says move, I move. Mm -hmm. You know, if he says do whatever, and as crazy as it is, and it's been some crazy stuff, Sharon, crazy stuff that people would say, you're nuts. And they have said it. You're nuts. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. But I do know that um, God is good. I, I take him at his word, Sharon. I really do. And so um, the future for Gwen Mentor is yet to yet be told. To, uh -huh. Yeah. I'm just thankful that I'm alive to be able to sit here and have this conversation with you. You know, um, four years ago, it was uncertain. And it's, and it's always uncertain, but... I just know that I have a purpose and evidently I haven't completed that purpose yet. But he is the author and the finisher, God is. I, I give him all the glory, everything. And uh, I've cried a many a nights. I've been confused a many a days. I wondered what in the world, God, mm -hmm. do you want me to do? But I made a promise that I would do whatever he'd ask me to do. You drink of that cup. I do. And, and I pay for it. You know, there's a cost involved, you know? It really is a cost involved. My body, my health has always been that issue. And, um, but I smile through it. Because mm -hmm. you always look at there's somebody else that's so much worse than me, you know? And so. you know, when they are going to be young girls or young women that are going to be watching this show mm -hmm. and they're going to be thinking they've been through a lot of things themselves yeah and they look to you for inspiration mm -hmm. i'm going to give you the last word on what would you say to them 
I think one of the things, Sharon, that I would really say is you can't look at your past to determine your future. If you keep looking back, you can never look forward. And no matter how rough things get, if you can always believe in you and you let God lead you with everything, you got to have him first. I'll tell anybody he's got to be first because I've messed up a many a day trying to do it by myself. Mm. And there's no, I can't, I can't do that. But when he's first, everything changes. So I've been a single mom before. I've gone through all these incredible things, but that's it. If I look at my mistakes, if, if, they, if you look at your mistakes, you can't, you can't move forward because you keep looking at what I was mm -hmm. when God's trying to tell you that's who you were. But I've got, I want to show you who I made you to be. And so we got to be confident women, godly women, women that trust him, take him at his word, and just push forward. Push, give it all you got, and smile through the journey. And you can make it. You can make it. I love you. I love you, too. Thank I you thank so you. much. Thank you for having me. You guys, continue to watch as we celebrate other phenomenal women just like Wynn Winter. You heard it from her. Let God lead your way. Continue to watch, and we'll talk to you soon.